Every day is filled with choices. You're here because you're choosing to start with a win. Get ready to be inspired, learn something new, and connect with the Win Nation. And coming to you from Denver, Colorado, home of Remax World Headquarters, it's Adam Kanto, CEO of Remax with Start With A Win. How you doing, producer Mark? I am doing so good. I love it. We have an incredible guest, longtime friend, uh, Seth Madison, internationally recognized thought leader, author, advisor, top-rated keynote speaker on change and innovation. I mean, I, I've known Seth for quite some time. I mean, Seth talks to us about sales and influence and leadership and the future of work. You've done so much over the years, man. I, it's great to have you on the show. Welcome. Thanks for having me, Adam. I need to bring you with me on the road as my as my hype man out front because nobody you know, <laughs> gives a boost like you do. It is very much appreciated, and I am, of course, uh, super grateful for the opportunity to come and have a little conversation and hang out today. Just to dive headfirst into leadership here, and were you feeling the same way that I was? And I'm like, what happened to these other CEOs? They they went away. I mean, what what went through your mind when you started uh, seeing people disappear? Yeah, there was there was definitely definitely a group that that went silent, especially in those early days. And uh, I understand why. You know, it's it's fear based. And in in full transparency, uh, there was even a little bit of that for me. And in those first couple of weeks of the pandemic, I I watched, the team watched as about 75% of our projected revenue for the year evaporated, you know, right before our eyes, like sand falling through your fingers. And, you know, you're just in reactionary mode and you're trying to remain calm. And one of the things that I recognized, and I've, I've seen it in other entrepreneurs that we were supporting, other leaders, is that as leaders, we have a tendency to just like shove all of the emotion that comes up down in order to slay the dragon at hand, right? It's like, I, you can't even allow yourself to feel the weight of what's happening because you've got to project confidence, but we got to power through this. And for me, you know, it wasn't until maybe July or August of 2020 before I even let myself feel the weight of what had happened, the weight of the loss. Because, uh, you know, e even the elements of like, despite all of the personal work I've done on myself to detach who I am from the what I do, which is hard for all of us, especially as men, it, it, and then all of a sudden the work I'm doing has been taken away. Who am I? What's my value to the world if I don't have a stage and audiences in front of me to be able to make an impact on? And so I had to confront big, painful, hot, hard lessons. But once I did that, once I got myself whole, then I was in a position to be able to pour into other people. So I think part of the lesson here for leaders is like, how fast can you get yourself to bounce back? And the more rooted and grounded you are, right? I love, you know, just your work around starting with a win, the routines, rituals, and habits, the communities, the things that you put around yourself in times of, of plenty and abundance and, and good times, they prepare you for when the storms come so that you can get through them. But the reality is a lot of people stop taking care of themselves first in this depression reaction. Yes. What did you see with leaders? How did you, uh, you know, pull yourself up by the bootstraps and go, I can't let myself go that way? I mean, what was the realization for you that other leaders needed to hear from you on or started understanding? Yeah, it's such a great question. So it really does come back to, you know, prior to the pandemic hitting, you know, I'm a, a I call it a self-improvement, self-exploration junkie. I always have been. Uh, I would consider myself deeply spiritual. I have a strong meditation practice. I had routines and rituals in place going into it. You know, the pandemic then forces, it's, there's a, a bit of shock to the body and you have to respond to the moment, but they absolutely pulled me through. And one of the pieces of advice that I give to leaders, and, and this kid continues even to right now, because whether or not you're in an industry or a sector that's, that's flourishing and thriving right now, or you're, you're challenged, we're all going to have these moments. You know, everyone wants leaders to speak from this place of authenticity and transparency and realness. And I think our fear as leaders is like, you know, I, I need to normalize, you're asking me to normalize the struggle to, and when I say normalize the struggle, I mean talk about the challenge of, and the pain and the hardship. And leaders will say, I get people want me to do that, Seth, but at the same time, I need to project 
confidence. I, I can't let my people lose faith and trust in me that I can see us through. And so the tip to that is you have to be able to normalize the struggle and say, here's what I'm navigating, but then you must follow it up with, and here is what I'm doing about it. You have a book called The Future of Leadership, and you talk a lot about how business has evolved. We've had a lot of forced change over the last 12 months or so. What do you think is important for leaders today in order to be an effective leader over the next 12 to 24 months? Yeah, of course, of course. You know, there's the fundamentals, but but 100%, you know, high EQ leadership, heart-centered leadership, truly caring and loving about loving your people. It, it, it's an absolute requirement. This is a, you know, we collectively went through real trauma as a society, not to mention it, it, it has been a, I would call it a collective existential experience for all of us. There's not a single person that over the past 18 months didn't ask themselves the kind of big questions of like, who am I? What do I want? What brings me joy? Why am I doing this work? And if as a leader, you're not equipped to be able to be in those kind of conversations, to be able to help and shepherd people who are struggling with mental health. And so if you don't have the, the skills and the competencies to be able to deeply care, show up, even something as simple as your presence, right? So what are my skills with being able to actually break the barrier of my camera and this screen so that you feel like I am here in this moment with you? And maybe for nothing else other than asking great questions and being present to what you need so that I can then coach you through this moment. High EQ, high coaching. And then the two other, if we want to talk specific skills, Adam, I would say, number one, it's the skill of what I call learning agility. And my favorite definition is this, it's essentially knowing what to do when you don't know what to do. And I think it is so important in this moment. When we, when we don't know what the future is going to be, you, there are, there's not a, a, a roadmap. So what's my move when I don't know what to do? Do I default into a fixed mindset? Do I retreat? Or do I have a growth mindset and I lean into it and I trust myself that, you know what? I'm not gonna be perfect right away, but I'm gonna keep leaning into it. So learning agility and then maintaining your agency. And what's agency? Agency is essentially believing that you have some control over your life. You're, you're not on the sidelines, you're not a victim. I, I get to dictate and decide. I claim I am the, the creator of my reality. Whether you believe you, you are in control or you don't, it doesn't matter whether you really are in control. The research shows the people who believe they're in control have a higher performance and have higher quality of life because of the belief. So we can argue all day long about are there systems of oppression? You know, are there structures that you have no control over? It's irrelevant. What do you believe will dictate the experience that you have? Seth, this has been a deep conversation and very, very powerful for leaders because ultimately, you know, we we run businesses and we create results, but we have to influence people to do that. And we have to enroll people. I think enrollment is one of the most powerful leadership words now. We have to enroll people to do that. So thank you for all that you do in your business in helping leaders and organizations capture these thoughts and create a greater workplace for everybody. So Seth, I have, I have a question for you that I ask everybody in closing out this show. I've known you for a long time, man, and you've got some great answers. This question is, Seth Madison, how do you start your day with a win? Great question. Starting the day with a win is about dropping into a silence meditation so that I can connect with my highest self. And from that place, when I show up and I create content and I speak and I lead and I coach and I advise from that place and not from a place of fear and scarcity and lack and limitation, I tap into a source of power and knowledge and insight that I think helps me operate at my highest potential. But it starts from dropping into the silence. So meditation, quick little drop in, connect with that. We're off to the races, my friend. Awesome. Thank you so much, Seth. We appreciate you being on Start With A Win. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, hey, and thank you for listening to Start With A Win. Uh, if you'd like to ask Adam a question or tell us your Start With A Win story, give us a call, leave us a message at 888-581-4430. Don't forget, the Start With A Win book comes out soon, so head over to startwithwin.com. You can pre-order your copy there and uh, also be entered uh, to potentially get some incentives, some, some perks, if you will. Um, you can follow Adam on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And remember, start with a win.
Welcome to the after party, Seth. Oh, <laughs> I love this. This is, this is the party after the party. For anyone who's stuck around on YouTube and has watched this to the end, they get the extra content. I love this, Producer Mark. I think I want to start incorporating one. this into some of our stuff. <laughs> it's the All right, Easter hey, egg. I, you that's get, right. You hang out with Seth Madison after the show. That's Love right. It. Hey, I got a, I got a question. I got some conversation cards here. Mm. One, uh, better conversations, one card at a time. Uh, I have a question. Would you rather lose the ability to read or lose the ability to speak? Lose the ability <laughs> to speak. Period. Okay. Yeah. All right. Easy. I can that's see easy that. One. Yeah, because if you can't read, I mean, there's just so much you couldn't do in your life, uh, even personal growth and things like that. Right, a lot of it comes through through uh, through reading, speaking. I mean, sign language is very sign you know, language and your ability writing. and your ability to write. Right, like the biggest yeah. thing. So, like if 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 you're a teacher and you're like, can I still? Because you can't be a teacher if you're not a student. Period. Yeah. Full stop. So, losing the ability to read robs you of your ability to teach, but you don't have to talk. Hey, guys, thanks so much for sticking around on YouTube and hanging out with us. Don't forget to hit that bell icon so you get notified every single time an episode gets released. If you enjoyed this content and love the stuff Seth's been sharing with us, give that thumbs up. It'll uh, produce it uh, to more people and, and uh, hack the algorithm for us. And then, again, always subscribe, uh, and we just appreciate you being a part of uh, the Start With a Win community. Until next time, we'll see you when we see you.